Hello and welcome. My name is Sean Simmons. I'm a physical therapist, and today we're going to talk about cervical radiculopathy, otherwise known as a pinched nerve in your neck. We're going to talk about what it is, what causes it, how you can prevent it, and what to do if you already have it. Pinched nerve is a term that is commonly overused and pretty much any time anyone has pain somewhere that is not muscular or joint, they say, oh, I have a pinched nerve in my neck and, and that's why everything hurts. And I'd like to clarify this a little bit, at least for this talk. The, in this talk, the pinched nerve means a nerve in your neck is being pinched or encroached upon by something else. So... This can be a disc, a bone spur, uh, any number of things, and we'll go over these things. Um, but a pinched nerve is something that's putting pressure directly on the nerve. Uh, the pain is usually greater in the arm, actually, than in the neck. And this pain, numbness or tingling, can all go down into the hand uh, and all the way up into the neck as well. So one of the common questions, is this a pinched nerve or is this stenosis? And, and the main difference is really what's causing the pressure on the nerve, because both of these are cases where there's pressure on a nerve. Uh, the, the pinched nerve, when you hear that term, it usually means that there's a, a disc, a bulging disc. Uh, and if you hear the term stenosis, then you're, you're more commonly looking at uh, an arthritic condition or a bone spur or, some, or an encroachment on the nerve. Uh, and that's what that is. This is a relatively common condition. The severity and, and the cause varies widely. Um, neck pain in general is experienced by the majority of the population at some point, And the recurrence rate is relatively high. A lot of people, about a third, even state that problems persist up to 12 months. And the what they consider problems is highly variable from stiffness to excruciating pain. And about half of these people will actually miss greater than one week of work. And this is the largest workman's compensation cost second only to low back pain. So neck pain in general is a big problem. The cases of cervical radiculopathy or, or that pinched nerve it is much less, but is still relatively common in this, in this area. So what causes pressure on nerves in your neck? And what causes that typical pinch nerve? Well, arthritis is our main cause for stenosis. So arthritis leads to decreased space for the nerves to come out. And your typical bone spurs and those can all encroach on the space around the nerve and create problems. The bulging disc, again, is what we're really calling the, the official pinch nerve in this talk at least, um, a bulging disc can occur just from normal wear and tear. It can be caused by a car accident or any other kind of trauma where your neck whips around. Other causes are forward head posture, and that's really the image to the right. And this is one of those cases where you're really creating more of an arthritic condition or um, closing that space over time. So it's more of a stenosis type problem versus your, your stereotypical pinch nerve. And then again, there are a number of other factors that are part of your lifestyle, uh, obesity, older age, all things that can cause, cause problems. And I also included muscle trigger points on that list there. And that's because some of these muscle trigger points around your neck and shoulder can actually cause symptoms down your arm that might look like a, a stenosis or a pinched nerve in your neck. And those are the things that your physical therapist should be able to screen out. What are some signs and symptoms of a pinched nerve? Pain in the arm is, is your first symptom and your primary symptom with this condition. 
Um, you can have pain in the neck, but again, the pain down the arm is usually more intense and something that people focus on more often than the pain in the neck. You might also have numbness and tingling all the way down to the hand. Stiffness is very common, especially in one direction versus the other, and the decreased motion is also part of that. You may also have pain and tenderness in the neck, but again, uh, the pain is more common in the arm. What are some of the ways to prevent this condition and improve your neck's health overall? The primary one that we give to most patients is improving deep neck flexor control and endurance. And these muscles just get underused in today's society because so many people hunch over and have a forward head and, and are really rounding out. And the problem is that when you sit with your head forward or your shoulders rounded, you don't use these deep neck flexor muscles as much, which is important because they really stabilize your neck and are crucial in maintaining a healthy spine, a healthy neck. Again, posture, eating healthy, and maintaining a healthy weight are all important for your general health as well, as is regular exercise, avoiding smoking, and avoiding high-impact activities. But in order to target this condition specifically, the deep neck flexor endurance and really strong shoulder and scapular stabilizer muscles have also been shown to be important in preventing any strain or undue strain on the neck. If you are starting to notice some symptoms down into your arm, and especially if they go down all the way to your hand, uh, it's, it's time to see a medical professional. Uh, a lot of people try and put this off, and it just doesn't work. The condition tends to get worse when left untreated. So uh, there are simple things you can do, like seeing a nutritionist to maybe improve diet, maybe lose weight if that's something that you need to do. Um, my recommendation is going to your physician, where they can talk about various anti-inflammatory medications or other medications, and injections if they're recommended, and also to your local physical therapist because physical therapy is really your, your front line against this getting worse. Physical therapy uses specific and controlled strengthening and flexibility training and a wide variety of manual or hands-on interventions to reduce pain and improve the motion and function of your neck. A lot of people tend to come into my office with a lot of pain, and they always want to know, is physical therapy going to do anything, or is it too late? And unfortunately, the answer is that it varies. My recommendation initially is always to see the physical therapist and your physician, because your physician has a number of conservative treatments that they can try first as well. And again, physical therapy is going to use those specific exercises and stretches and hands-on techniques, and also a number of pain-reducing modalities to help control the pain and improve your function. Um, there, is a, there are situations where it just gets to be too bad. If the pain is too much and your function is decreasing rapidly and the physical therapy isn't helping, then surgery is indicated for this condition in a lot of situations. Everyone always wants to know what type of exercises are safe to do with this condition. And my best answer is to consult your physical therapist because the answer will vary widely on based on your symptoms. Uh, how, how painful is it? How much is your function limited? What does your motion look like? So the, the specific answer varies widely depending on how you're presenting. In general, Low-impact exercises, cardiovascular exercises, uh, gentle stretching like yoga and Pilates, and a targeted strengthening program are all very safe to do and can even eliminate the problem in some cases. I just wanted to briefly show you these, the results of these two articles done in the Journal of Orthopedic and Sport Physical Therapy because I think they're excellent and they they really show what physical therapy can do. And the chin tucks, which we talked about earlier, doing the strengthening those deep neck flexor muscles, I give 
to just about all of my patients have neck pain because almost across the board, those muscles are weak. But in the case of either stenosis or a, a pinched nerve, these chin tucks are just, they do a great job. They seem simple and boring, but they really do a nice job. So the study on the top showed that neck retraction caused immediate reduction or relief of radicular pain, which is exactly what we're looking to do. The next one shows the dimensions of the cervical neural foramina, and this is just the space where the nerves come out. And what they showed with this using an MRI in 2002 was that doing these chin tucks and some of the techniques that we use in physical therapy actually improved the space by between 6 and 11% where the nerves come out. So physical therapy was used to create space to get pressure off of the nerves and therefore reduce symptoms and pain. This was a study that was created for physical therapists to use in the clinic, but I think the interesting part about it for patients is that the research showed that manual traction or mechanical traction, and that's just where you know we you pull your head up towards the ceiling essentially or pulling it away from the rest of your body. And what this does is create space for the nerves to come out. So it opens the space where the nerves are coming out. And the study was showing that there was quality short-term improvement in in doing this when these variables were present. And all these variables are things that your physical therapist can talk to you about. But again, it just shows that these hands-on techniques that the physical therapy will do uh, are beneficial in reducing pain and hopefully improving function. I'd like to talk about direct access again just because I, I think it's very important. I, I get so many people that come into the clinic with a lot of pain and I ask them why didn't they come in earlier and they say because they weren't able to get in to see the doctor or the specialist until three, four, five weeks after this problem happened. And some doctors are able to get you in quicker and some aren't. And the nice thing about living in North Carolina is that you actually don't need a physician's referral to see physical therapy. You can come directly to the physical therapist and schedule an appointment and come right in. The physical therapist will always communicate with your physician, but that means that as soon as you start having pain, you can immediately go to your physical therapist, figure out what it is, and get started with some kind of treatment to prevent it from getting any worse. So in North Carolina, you do not need a doctor's note. We have direct access, and you can see the physical therapist whenever you want, and the insurance still covers it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope it was informative. Uh, if you have any free time still, please check out my websites at thesmartlifeseries.com and like me at facebook.com slash smartlifeseries. Thanks again.